My name is Joris Peels, and welcome to another edition of 3D Printing News Unpeeled, courtesy of 3dprint.com. So today we talk to you about the Karl Meyer Group, and Karl Meyer is a, a German textile manufacturing equipment company, and they've uh, combined a warp knitted textile manufacturing machine with a 3D printer uh, in a roll-to-roll -roll process. Uh, so this is an inline 3D print head that can be moved uh, in a on an H-based uh, gantry it, uh, at a speed of five meters per second. Um, there's a camera system on it and a pattern recognition software to check to see if it's the pattern uh, is the correct one. And the, the XY print direction is two by one meter. So the print speed and the print direction is really uh, quite spectacularly large. Now, uh, it can uh, reportedly work at a total of 85 uh, meters of textile per hour process alongside that. And it's meant to lay down uh, polyurethane or silicone. Now, um, this is, you know, is it a 3D printing production technology? To what extent is it 3D printing production technology? What we can do here is at a really high rate of speed, label or print on top of textiles. And right at the moment, we've seen some 3D printed fashion examples, which usually are very unwearable, or people trying to literally shoehorn, if you will, uh, 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 3D printing polymers into uh, a shoe application or something like this. And here we're talking about a relatively straightforward, relatively um, kind of high-speed, highly productive way of well, adding material to a textile. Um, now, what they hope to do is maybe cut some production steps uh, they hope to kind of maybe put add some logos and other things like that. That to me sounds relatively okay. You know, might be high value in certain cases application. Uh, but they're talking as well on partial reinforcements, and especially for athleisure and athletics. So think about like a yoga or kind of like a sports shirt or something like that. When he's like Under Armour things, I'm talking about kinesio tapes or kind of specific kind of reinforcements or type of uh, uh, kind of uh, breaks in the cloth or types of other things to to reinforce your ability to move or, or reinforce how form fitting that uh, garment is. They're also talking about like, for example, uh, strengthening certain areas. So on a shoe sole, putting an extra material in certain areas or on a, a, a textile part, putting a kind of wear surface, if you will, on a certain area. Now that kind of stuff is, it, that gets my blood flowing a lot more because then we can talk about stuff that you can tell the consumer, this yoga outfit, these yoga pants are going to let you do your positions better. Or this shirt is going to let you weight lift better or move better when you're running or something like that. So that kind of thing, to me, is a real value add for clothing producers. And could really, you could really imagine, I don't know anything about clothing design or anything like that, but you could really imagine how a clothing designer could really have a field day with that or talk to a, some biomechanical person. She could then say, oh, if we change it like this, then we can make a sports garment that's more uh, you know, comfortable to wear for marathon runners or something like this. All right. Uh, so things like that, uh, you know, integrating stuff like that is really uh, also um yeah, I think that that's, that's more fundamentally interesting, at least to me. Um, also, they're talking about car seats and car and in car interiors. And there we can see that it's kind of surfacing and adding surfaces could uh, be, um, uh, well, it could really, really be an advantage to the sellers of car seats uh, or of other car interior elements and stuff like that. Uh, roof liners, door panels, things like that. Think of like a grip surface, like a silicone or polyurethane kind of grip surface on something. Uh, or something like that. And then, and then you can see that maybe that could uh, be a value there as well. The system itself looks uh, quite simple, um, but I really think that this is kind of, I'm not as excited as a lot of people are about shoes. I know that, that I think shoes and material extrusion could be very, uh, an individualized shoes that I am excited about, but what's going on right now, I'm not as excited about as others. I'm definitely not excited about the, the, the couture kind of 3D printing of outfits that don't actually work. This kind of thing, you know, imagine like a company like Nike comes out with a shirt that's meant to be much more comfortable uh, on your body while running a marathon, for example, that, that uh, eliminates your wear or on your body and stuff like that. Now, that to me is a functional ad, something that the consumer may pay for, something the consumer may go into a store for and something that, that Nike could sell or Puma or some other brand. So I don't know, this is, this is to me uh, more interesting. Now, the next thing is, well, it's essentially some mosquito tester. And is this going to change the world? I don't know, but I do think that this is a wonderful uh, idea. So Kevin Jansen, a Rice bioengineering student, uh, and his PhD advisor, uh, Omid Vesey, or Vesey, 
I'm sorry about that, uh, were working in the lab, and they came up with a channeled hydrogel kind of thing. We've seen a lot of these things right now, and we've seen a lot of uh, organoid or or mimic the human body type of microfluidics type of solutions, uh, lab on chip, body on chip, organ on chip. Now, this is one that I think is striking its uh, simplicity and applicability. One could really see how you could uh, test this uh, very, very well. And essentially what they've done is they made uh, a hydrogel with tiny channels in it, uh, and then they've flown blood through it. And uh, they can then place these different hydrogel blood units in a box, which you see on the right-hand side, and uh, they could then point cameras at it. And they point cameras at all the different kind of fields, right? With these blood hydrogels on it and what they can do is for example test which uh what is an effective uh kind of mosquito repellent so at the moment for example they tested deet and non-deet kind of alternatives and they do this and then the camera of course counts all the mosquitoes interactions and things like that and we can do this and up at this this point they're they're doing this like boxes tied to human pe beings and counting them by hand and stuff like this so this seems like it could save a lot of people a lot of work and really automate uh, a part of research that is could be a really tedious uh, and also painful and imagine just how many better how much better the information would be if we can kind of get like uh, kind of interactions on you know what cologne doesn't go with your deet or you know shouldn't use sunscreen with your deet or which kind of different material works different with different types of mosquitoes for example think about just how much more granular the research can be if it's made much cheaper so I love this very much, and, and imagine like all the other types of things you could do with with, with this kind of a similar type of uh, approach. So this is really kind of elegant, really, really kind of uh, uh, a wonderful idea. And I think maybe a lot of blood and skin research, we could do something very similar to that uh, as well. So that could be, yeah, I like this. I like this a lot. The next thing I like a ton, actually, uh, and, and this is a 3D printed horse trailer. Now, and the first thing, you're maybe looking at this and you're thinking, yeah, who cares, right? But I think this is really, really important. Okay, so Double D Trailers uh, has uh, developed uh, a monocoque 3D printed horse trailer. So one uh, particular uh, uh, body, self-reinforcing body, as opposed to a sheet metal built up or a kind of like a frame built up with infill material that we, we we're normally seeing in these kind of trailers. Now, this is a 4.6 by 4.9 meter by 2.4 meter wide trailer and is a 20 hour print. Uh, and uh, what happens is this thing is 20%, it weighs 20% less. Of course, a lot less material usage, but at the same time, also a lot less mileage. If you're thinking about a horse trailer and a thing is somebody carrying one or two horses in this thing, uh, you know, just saving any kind of weight will really uh, kind of add up over time in your mileage and your, your use of gas and things like that. Um, the, also, it's made out of polycarbonate, uh, carbon fiber or CF reinforced polycarbonate, they kind of say that it's, you know, recycled and recyclable and, uh, well, good luck in trying that with carbon fiber reinforced polycarbonate, by the way, but uh, it's at least notable that they're trying. Um, but one of the biggest reasons really these guys are doing it is to really shorten and make their supply chain more resilient. And the fact is that they, this company, this trailer company has an eight to 10 month lead time. So if you would buy a trailer from them, another kind of trailer, they would have to wait you know, close to like their three quarters of a year uh, to get your horse trailer, which is extraordinary. Uh, you know, I'm not talking a space shuttle or whatever here. Uh, the horse trailer apparently has a three quarter of a year or more lead time. So any kind of reduction in this lead time uh, is, of course, uh, very advantageous. Now, the design is done by One One Lab uh, Design, uh, it's an automotive design company. Uh, the printer itself comes from Low Psi Robotics. Uh, that's a company that not is not being talked about a lot, but maybe should be talked about a lot more. They're in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, so then you know already that, that there's some of these uh, ex bamily type of uh, Oak Ridge large format uh, printer guys involved, and there are. Uh, they've developed a system based on, well, so I'll show you this. This is like the, the, the production system as you see it. So we'll have multiple robots printing at the same time through the gantry and also uh, printing parts that are going to be uh, put in uh, to the, the assembly later on. Uh, nice little hopper set up there. You can see that the, the long print runs KUKA robots, which seems like a good deal uh, if you're not working in the military. And uh, yeah, this this uh, and this and is a kind of closer up view. This is not the, 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 the horse trailers. This is a closer up view of low side robotics uh, machines. Um, they, yeah, six axis KUKA robot. Uh, machining heads that you can get uh, separately as well uh, on the machine, and there's an extrusion-based system. Uh, they can do up to 90 
kilograms of material an hour. Uh, there's a couple of ex-local motor guys there. Some people have done some stuff, Oak Ridge and stuff. So they seem to have quite a lot of experience in candle power. Remember, local motors, is the, they tried to make local transport and local factories available. And they uh, ultimately then tried to make a 3 d car, the Strandos or something. And then, then they started trying to make this really small little portable bus or something like that. And then they eventually kind of ran out of money. It was kind of sad because they were doing really kind of cool stuff. Uh, and but these guys now have uh, find a, a new life for themselves, like in these guys in, in producing these systems. Another group of local motors guys are going forward with Hattie, which is another kind of like more an applied uh, 3D printing startup. So these guys, uh, Loci, uh, I guess it would be pronounced Loci, Loci uh, work for Azura 3D Print Homes that have made these accessory dwelling units in, in California that we talked about. Uh, they've made a pavilion in, in Tennessee, uh, and they've worked uh, with a company called Prototype Cubed, I guess. That's kind of an applied kind of, we make chairs, uh, 3D printed chairs kind of company. And so I like this. I like this very, very much. Now, now you may not be very excited about horse trailers. You might think that's kind of stupid, but think about just an 8 to 10 hour lead time in any kind of thing. Think of how customized these products are, right? Trailers, right? The, the Just the trailer industry, we're talking also like trailers for large trucks and all these kind of trailers, this is $60 billion industry. So it's significantly larger than our own, right? Um, and then we're talking also, think about police cars, uh, ambulances, uh, uh, kind of any kind of specialty vehicle, right? That is a huge market. The aftermarket itself is huge, but also just these specialty vehicles where every county wants a little bit of a different fire truck or every... Um, uh, state police wants a completely different police car. Just think of it, how many components are, are being made in that market and how many components would benefit from being made locally and having shorter lead times. I think it's fantastic. And I love specialty vehicles. I love the specialty vehicle market for large format 3D printing. So I think this is really important. I know it's not going to get the news that all the other stuff is getting. I know that it's not going to get perhaps a lot of your attention. I mean, you're probably going to gloss over this and think, oh, horse trailers, Really? But this is really big. This is big news, and it's a big application, and it could be absolutely astoundingly huge. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope you pay attention to it. Well, anyway, this is another uh, edition of 3D Printing News Unpeeled. My name is Joris Peels. This is thanks to 3dprint.com, and I uh, hope you really enjoyed it. Have a great day.